Welcome back to the program. Now, winemaking is an art that dates back centuries, perfected in vineyards, even before the time of the pharaohs. Well, at first, only the elite indulged in it. Today, everyone enjoys wine, more than 30 billion bottles of it. Well, Italy, Spain and France, uh, they are the top three exporters of wine, with Australia in fourth position. But Australians began exporting wine in the 1800s, and its wines have gained quite a reputation. Well, let's meet Bill Hardy, a fifth-generation Australian winemaker from the Hardy's family, one of the most celebrated winemakers in the world, who have been around for over 160 years. Uh, morning, Bill. Welcome to the morning, show. Steve. Good morning, Steve. Morning, Susanna. So your family has been involved in this industry uh, five generations already, right? Exactly. What is it about wine that excites the Hardy's? I think it's the fact that it's a product of nature. You know, it's something that... Uh, that is different every year because the climate to the seasons are different so you end up with a different product mm -hmm. it's a living product and it, it you know it really excites me and i think it excites the family sort of to follow a wine mm -hmm. from its birth through adolescence into adulthood you know it's just a, a wonderful product of nature right. yeah. was this something that you know you grew up with i guess since it's part of the family the business in that yeah. sense and generations before we're doing it yeah. was it common to be running around in, in the vineyards and stuff like that <laughs> funnily enough it was it was common to run around in the vineyards but wine was not pushed at me you know fortunately my parents were were a little bit wary about pushing it too hard at us so uh -huh. you know my drinking when I was a young man was all about beer uh, <laughs> it, it took a while to discover wine right well you talked about weather conditions and the climate and how they are crucial factors when it comes to uh, 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 winemaking of course I mean with the weather now being so unpredictable do you face a challenge every year I mean in how you want to tweak it and certainly play with the, it? yeah there's there's a lot of talk about climate change um, and and the way seasons are becoming a little more variable and you know Australia is certainly having to adapt to that we seem to be a country where climate change is having quite a major effect so there has been a sort of move to cooler wine areas. There has been a move to grape varieties that ripen a little bit later in the season. We are, you know, we're very conscious of, of the changes that are going on and we are making sure that we're, you know, we're ready. All right. Mm -hmm. And has technology come in to, mm -hmm. to help out in this? Because if you look back, I guess, yeah. to the traditional methods, yes. things have changed quite a bit. They have, but once again, I think it's interesting. I look at our own cellars and uh, what's happened in our own cellars is that we still use many of the same principles as we used hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. but we have much better sort of almost material handling systems and whatnot but the actual principles of converting a grape into wine as gently as possible you know is still very much the mm -hmm. the philosophy mm -hmm. so you can't fix a bad grape in that sense you cannot <laughs> no that's exactly right i was saying to someone yesterday about uh, you know, wine making I think is probably about 90% of the quality comes from the grape itself mm -hmm. and the winemaker really only has a chance to perhaps add another, you know, 10% with his skills, you know, uh -huh. he, he relies so heavily on, what, on the quality of the grape. Well, with that aside, I mean, what is it that you can control? I mean, that 10%, what can you do to sometimes well, tweak you it? Can, you can play around with different yeasts which mm. uh, ferment the juice, which give different flavours. Uh, you can uh, perhaps leave the juice in contact with the skins a little bit longer to get a little more, you know, depth and density. Mm. Uh, there are a whole range of things one it's can do, science, but, actually. but yeah, but they, it is a science. Once again, that that whole argument about how much is art and how much is science. Mm -hmm. I still think about ninety percent is science and ten percent is art. Uh -huh. You know, okay. that, that last ten percent right. of excellence comes from experience and just a, an imagination, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, earlier we mentioned how Australia is in fourth position in terms of, yeah. you know, wine all over the, wines all over the world. Yes. Uh, why do you think that's the case? Because, I mean, Australian wine has been around for a long time. Is it something that, you know, is it because, I don't know, you're so far down under? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, I'm convinced it's the style of wine we make. You think about it for a moment, the top three countries are the old world countries. Mm. They're mm. France, Italy and Spain. Now they produce a style of wine which has become famous over the years. It tends to be refined and has a certain elegance and stylishness. Uh, Australia came in with these much bigger, more fruity wines, you know, mm -hmm. that had softness and roundness. It was mm -hmm. quite a different style. So for a new wine drinker particularly, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, that bigger, softer, fuller, rounder uh, style appealed mm -hmm. rather than the leaner, more elegant uh, European style. Mm -hmm. and so I'm you sure think it's still just a matter of time? In other words, uh, you know, taste will always be changing, but because, you know, yeah. of, of how it started. 
Yeah, no, th taste does change, and I think even in Australia, we, our wine styles are changing too because people's palates, sure, they often are introduced to wine with those bigger, fuller styles, but gradually they tend to like to move to slightly drier and finer right. and more savoury wines. So oh, okay. we're certainly making those But if those you look at the big too. markets, US and the UK, um, Australian labels have been, um, the demand has been declining, sort of. What do you think is causing this dip? Well, I, I think one of our biggest problems was that we, we started doing so well, we got overly ambitious and we planted madly and we ended up actually creating a, a, an oversupply for a number of years. We've rectified that fortunately in the last two or three years, but of course the other factor has been our dollar has uh, gained in strength so much, so right. that has made it very hard for our exporters in, mm -hmm. in many markets around the world. Are there trends that winemakers like yourself will look out for, you know, to, to take advantage of when you're running your business? Oh, definitely, definitely. One of the things that's uh, hard about the wine industry is, though, ad is adapting to those trends because it is a slow industry to change. You can imagine if you want to, if there's a, f a fad for a new variety or there's a fad for a new mm -hmm. style, between planting the grape and ending up <laughs> with wine it, yeah. in the bottle can be four, five, six years. So uh -huh. it's, it's not easy to adapt to, to changes. The main trends tend to be from one variety to another, more than stylistically. You know, stylistically. Right. Yeah, the changes happen more slowly. Well, sometimes these trends are started on our own. I mean, Australian wines, as mentioned earlier, have a quite a different approach. And in fact, sometimes people have said it's a bit too too accessible, too fun, too <laughs> easy to just say, hey, anyone can drink a bottle of wine. It's no longer for the elite. You know, I mean, you have cute labels on the wine yeah. bottles. Yeah. Uh, I remember first coming across a sparkling Shiraz. I mean, yes. and that almost seemed wrong <laughs> to a certain extent, right? <laughs> it's a classic Aussie style, yeah. sparkling Shiraz, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so do you think that has worked uh, for, against uh, the, the industry there? It worked for us, for, mm. for maybe 20, 25 years between the late 80s and the sort of mid 2000s. But I have to say, probably in the last five years, we've been perhaps labelled a little much as sort of the critter wine, the mm. big full fruity forward styles. And we haven't maybe made enough noise about the fact that we have some absolutely superb, elegant, complex wines coming out of uh, many areas from right. Australia. And Bill, I have to ask you this. Uh, I was pretty surprised, uh, learned it for the first time, that uh, you actually ship wine overseas in large capacity plastic bags, yeah. not in the bottles, <laughs> really. We do, we do. And it's interesting the reason. This was driven principally by our clients. Um, certainly the big English supermarkets became very conscious of consumers' demand that the, the carbon footprint of wine shouldn't be too big. Now you can imagine if you ship something in bottle from Australia to England, you're shipping glass, which, make, which weighs almost more than the, the wine inside right. the bottle. You're shipping corks, you're shipping capsules, you're shipping labels, you're shipping air, you're shipping carton. If you put it in a big plastic bag, just like the, uh, the wine, the bag in box wines, mm -hmm. you put a, a 20,000 litre bag inside a 20 foot container, uh, the wine, because there is no air at all in the package, there's no damage to the wine when mm. it gets to the other end, we package it over there. So the actual carbon footprint of the wine ends up being far less. It's, right. it's really the environmental concern that drove that change. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for coming in this morning, Bill. It's a Tell pleasure. Us more about, it's a pleasure. Uh, the industry, of course, fifth generation winemaker, Bill yeah. Hardy, giving us an inside look at the aspects involved in producing quality bottle of wine. I know, most of us find, only see the final product yes, and enjoy that, not about the hard work forgetting, Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to take off for a quick break, but coming up next on AM Live... Uh, we'll have more world news updates for you, so do stay tuned.